Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Know How is brought to you by Squarespace, the fast and easy way to create a high quality website, blog, online portfolio, or podcast site. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase on a new account, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code KNOWHOW12. And don't forget to try their brand new developer platform for complete code control. Today, it's a viewer request episode. Yeah, today, you'll know how to make your own podcast. I am Leo Laporte. That is I as actor. Today we're going to show you how to do something that I don't do anymore. I just want to point this out. We're going to show you how to podcast. You don't do podcasting anymore? This is not a... Do you think this is a podcast? No, this is internet television. This is not a podcast. So what we're going to talk about is the traditional podcast, mm -hmm. which is an audio recording usually made by a lonely individual in their basement. <laughs> yes. Or not. Or maybe the attic. Or, or the, the attic. The second floor of a cottage. And then offered via an RSS feed. Uh, online, people could subscribe to it, get it downloaded automatically, and listen to it. That's a podcast. But you know, even when I was just doing podcasts, I always said, well, I think that's a diminutive name because I knew that someday we would build a multi million dollar facility like this and we would be streaming live video to the entire internet. You can't call this a podcast. We can actually show how people. How people can do that later. In that, yeah, that'll be a this later is the start episode. Of it. The weird thing is, I was I had no idea what we we're doing this week. I I put it up to a vote. You asked people on Twitter. I was on Twitter and I asked. Uh, you know, when you start a podcast, you need something usually called a topic for a show. Well, you know about this, right? You, you want to go. What are we going to talk about? So yeah. I asked you guys if you were going to start a podcast right now, what would you actually have it about? And so we asked us on Twitter. <laughs> you follow me on Twitter. I asked the question this week. What would you be doing? And if you had the hashtag now, people KH. People need to follow at IAS, I-Y-A-Z, if they want to see these questions. You do these when in the week? Do you They're do usually these? about Monday okay. or so. So, so, if so check Monday and look for it. Look and then... for it. And then your question, your answers could be on the air Ooh. just this way. It's going to show up all fancy thanks to Vidpresso. Ooh. First answer was from Tiago. He wants to start a podcast on cooking techniques. Huh? So I guess... I don't really know how that would be. Video. Yeah, that'd be video. That'd definitely be video. video. A podcast could be video. There's nothing that says it can't be video. Uh, Alan wrote in. He said he started a podcast about tablets and phones and all things mobile. Awesome. OS agnostic, of course. Of so course. Going all over the place. Yeah. And Eric Anderson, I got to say, made me laugh. A podcast review podcast. A podcast <laughs> reviewing other podcasts. So we're not going to do that episode. That's that'd a be crazy. Meta. It's super <laughs> meta at that point. So let's go into how to actually start a podcast on your own. It's pretty easy. Where should we go, Leo? Should we do well, it? Well, I guess we should start with a definition. So uh, a podcast could be audio or mm -hmm. video. Podcasting started in 2004, and it's an interesting story. Would you like to hear it? I would love sit to Sit down, this. enjoy, relax. Okay. So <laughs> it goes along. Sit down, I'm okay. It's a long-ass story. But basically, in short, we've always had RSS feeds. You're familiar with RSS uh -huh. feeds. The idea stands for really simple syndication. Mm -hmm. The idea was you would you could stand up. Now. Okay. So to sit down. <laughs> anybody just tuning in is going to think you're weird. I am weird. But or short. Well, that's how you podcast. So, <laughs> anyway, so the idea of an RSS feed is you take content, and this was actually traditionally a blog, and you make it possible using an XML file for people to subscribe to your blog and read its contents in another program, an RSS reader like Google Reader and a lot of other RSS readers. Well, early on, Dave Weiner, who came up with the specification for RSS, decided to include, at the behest, I think, of Adam Curry, the former MTV J, VJ, as part of the specification that said you could include not just text in an RSS feed, but a link to a binary file. That's very important. A link to a binary file. And a podcast, technically, is a binary file for which an RSS feed has been made that somebody could subscribe to. And when a new binary file has been emitted by the publisher, that RSS feed reader will automatically get it. Usually you'll use a specialized kind of reader called a podcatcher or a podcast client. iTunes is the best known to, to get that file when it sees the RSS feed. So periodically look at the feed and say, ooh, there's a new binary file. But what is a binary file? Well, it could be audio, but it could be video, it could be a picture, 
could be anything other than text. Could even be an application. I had seen some for PDFs. People were putting up subscription-based things that way too. Uh, so, so a podcast, when we as we talk about it, and I'll, I'll I'll say this for you, and you can change it if you want. Sure. But what I normally think of as a podcast is a way of distributing media, audio or video, using an RSS feed. Sounds good to me. What we're going to do is we're going to record some audio. We're going to show you how to actually put it into a distribution medium. It's going to be pretty easy. Look, you got all the technical, theoretical stuff. This is when we actually get to show you how to it's, do it. It's actually surprisingly simple. Yeah, it's really, really easy. That's why gotten, I did it. Right? It's gotten super easy. It's actually how I got into it. I was watching this guy or listening to this guy because he used to have a, a was it return well, of the. It was shortly after line. that podcasting started in in uh, the fall of 2004. I started putting out my radio show. It was already a, a uh, audio file on the internet that people could download. So the only thing I had to do to make it a podcast was create that RSS feed. We already had the files. And so in, in October 2004, in the very earliest days of podcasting, I did one of the early podcasts, which was the Tech Guy Were you hand-coding the RSS back then? I, by the, at that time, I was using a text editor. And, and, it's, and I, so I intimately understand what an XML feed looks like, because I was writing my own. You don't have to do that anymore. No, it's really thank goodness. So, let's actually start by recording something. Start with your audio. We've right, got to make some content. Let's do some audio. What, what I suggest you do is you go out and get yourself Audacity, because it's a free audio editor and recorder. It's cross-platform, and it's really powerful considering it's free and cross-platform. So it's pretty hard to beat when it comes to that. So what we could do right now, Leah, would you like to record a podcast? Sure, let's on this do our podcast? Own podcast. All right, let's uh, go to By my... By the way, there are a lot of services, blog talk, radio, and mm -hmm. things that will do all this for you. We're showing you how to do it manually, but certainly you can investigate Audio Boo, for instance. Even SoundCloud now lets you do a podcast just by using the SoundCloud client. We're but gonna, we're going to do it ourselves. We're going to do it ourselves. We're gonna we use... have a microphone. It's built into the uh, computer. Right. At this point, I've realized you could probably do this with your smartphone alone. You probably don't even need a computer. Well, Audio Boo is a great example. It's a smartphone app, Android and iPhone, that lets you literally record using the microphone and the smartphone. Smartphone, it uploads and it makes an iTunes compatible podcast feed automatically for you. So for free, that's Audio crazy Boo, easy. SoundCloud does the same thing. So you're right, you could do this from your smartphone. We're showing we'll you. We'll use our a, computer. Kind of, this is old school. Right now, we're using the built in microphone. And you you can, may want out sound effects and things like oh, that. Oh, yeah, that's we're what we want the editors. We're going to hit record. So good morning, Leo Laporte. I'm Aya Zaktar. How are you? I am Leo Laporte, and this is our very first podcast. That was a great episode. I'm glad we did that, and we're going to hit <laughs> Amazing. stop. Amazing. Do you remember the times we had? It was great. <laughs> so we hit stop, and we got our audio file there. You know, rule number one, podcasts should be very, very short. <laughs> well, they don't have to be. No, they could fact, go. They could go on for like an hour and a half. Or two. <laughs> in some cases, I think we've actually done three-hour podcasts. Three, wow, that's epic. That's like a class. That's a long, <laughs> anyway, so anyway, so you got your recorded audio there. By the way, if you want to do like what Leo was doing, and you were on Skype with a bunch of guests, Skype is a great way to bring people in. Uh, you could use Google Hangouts at this point. Super easy. It does video switching for you, and it'll be backed up to YouTube if you want it to be. That's why the line is kind of blurred because uh, that's a perfect example. Google Hangouts does all the work for you, including recording video, and puts it up on YouTube. And you could actually create an RSS feed to that YouTube, I guess. Right, but it wouldn't be downloadable. But, but why you bother? Do some work, right? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, and it wouldn't be able. To, exactly, you would be able to download it. You just would send you there, and you would watch it online and this whole is, is that's why the word podcast to me even from the very beginning was obviously going to be outgrown very quickly there's lots of ways to put content on the internet but this is still fundamentally the basics so you've got your waveform here mm -hmm. uh, in uh, in uh, audacity, audacity. Um, you if you use a Skype you probably should use an additional bit of software that would let you record all the channels because one thing you'll notice right away is audacity records your remote callers but doesn't record you and for that, you I think you said call recorder? For me, on I use Mac OS X when I record my podcast. I use something from Ecamm called Call Recorder. It's Love not it. free. It's 20 bucks. But what it does, it will break out all the audio as separate files so you can change the audio levels of those yep. things. On top of that, it'll record video in several different ways. You can have the video side by side. You can have the videos uh, as separate files. And it works really well. It's downloaded as I mean, it's, it's updated as often as Skype is. So when it, Skype looks excellent. like well, it looks like it breaks something, yeah. Ecamm's on it and they fix it right away. So it's but really useful. That's Macintosh. That's Macintosh. There is a Windows solution. Actually, there's several. What do you use for Windows? Well, you, I see you have Pamela in your notes, mm -hmm. which is something I recommended for a long time. But there are more other choices now out there. Uh, there's one that people call and tell me all the time on the on the radio show, and I just off the top of my head don't remember. But Pamela is a great choice. Pamela biz. It's free for I think the first 15 minutes you start recording on Skype. There are paid options if you want to be able to record a much longer podcast 
from Pamela, but this is one of the ones that is always very popular on Google. I've seen it around for a very long time, and it's got legs. It seems like it's been around for a yeah. bit. So, th 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 you know, just as there's more than one choice with Audacity, your audio recording software, there's many choices with recording Skype. But what we're telling you is absolutely enough to get it done. You mentioned microphone. You can use the microphone that's built into the computer, but it's often better to go out and get a standalone microphone. For most people, the simplest thing is just a Skype headset. I like USB over analog. You get a cleaner sound. And we generally recommend the Plantronics Dot Audio 655 USB headset. It's less than 50 bucks. In fact, I think it's more like $30 on Amazon and other places. You plug that in the USB port. You get everybody on Skype to do the same and you're going to get a pretty good sound. You got that. And if you want, you can also hook up a regular old analog microphone using a USB interface to your device. Those are, I believe, we, we have we use a whole bunch of M-Audio products here. M-Audio is good. There's quite a few. In fact, Shure makes one. Shure makes a very nice kit that you might want to take a look at where they include a Shure SM58 microphone, which is kind of the standard $100 microphone. You cannot... You cannot hurt it, you cannot destroy it, but it has something you're going to want in a microphone, which is good off-axis rejection. That means, and you'll notice that uh, when we use our microphones, we really want a microphone that doesn't pick up studio noise or room noise. That's the problem with the laptop mic, is it's very boomy. You hear all the room. You'll see when you play our podcast back, you can hear a lot of other stuff going on. Let's go back. Let's, let's just listen. So Good morning, Leo Laporte. I'm Aya Zaktar. How are you? I am Leo Laporte. It's surprising quiet today. This is our very first podcast. But you see, I'm a little, a great, I'm a little, little tubby. I maybe I'm a perfectionist. Certainly, that's fine. Uh, but if you can go out if and get uh, something a little bit better, you'll get a better result. And I think you shouldn't make your listeners suffer. So the SM58, and then Shure makes a great little plug-in. It's just a little Canon plug that plugs into the bottom of that microphone and turns it into a USB device. It should be on that page, Brian. I think it's the CLU2, something like that. I can't remember the exact name. But they sell it as a kit. Total cost about $200. Um, and maybe I got the name wrong. You know, audio or video podcast, always make sure you have a decent audio source because when you're doing these things, people won't sit through and listen to really, really bad audio. I've seen this from experience. It's Trust true. me, if there's line noise, if there's buzzing, if there's any of that stuff, this is why sometimes you should go into edit and clean up your audio when you're doing this. And Audacity is really powerful for that. It's a good thing to keep in mind, and we're not here to tell you about the content of your show or how your show should sound, but it is a good thing to keep in mind that what people are are using there's a there's these there are a number of good uh usb mics this is another example of a mic that's already got a usb mm -hmm. interface uh built in um that when people are listening to your podcast they're really giving you a gift a gift of their time so don't waste it treat them as if their time is valuable as if their ears are valuable give them something of worth something that sounds good something that's not going to annoy them in a way it's it's what you're 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 doing by thanking them for let, listening to you is make it something that they really want to listen to now before we get to actually editing this let's take a break and thank x to you x to you thank you the chat room it's the sure x to you there it is see how small that is oh, i've seen and that it has a usb fantastic. cable uh, you know on the other end of it plugs into the mic and it does a good job of converting it to USB. The, it's complicated, I want to go into it too much, but professional mics are not designed to interface with computers, so you have to get a computer interface if you want to use a professional mic. Our show brought to you today by a great site for somebody who wants to do podcasting, squarespace.com. Wasn't well, that lucky? This would be a really good place. If you're a podcaster, you've got to have a website so people could find you on the internet. Squarespace is both the best hosting and the best content management system. And it really would be great for a podcaster. I know a lot of podcasters use Squarespace for a few reasons. First of all, it never goes down. So if your podcast is suddenly featured by Tim Cook on the stage at an Apple keynote, you don't have to worry about it. You're not going to get a bandwidth bill or anything. It's just going to stay rock solid, and everybody who wants to listen to you can listen to you. Squarespace never goes down. It's got the best content management software on top of that A-plus hosting environment. So you get to design beautiful sites that work on any size platform. Every, every photo is resized into seven different file formats so that it'll look great, even on a 3.5-inch iPhone all the way up to a 27-inch display. That's important, too, especially if you're an artistic type of photographer, a designer, uh, an architect. You want your site to look good, to work well, and Squarespace is going to do it. You get complete control of the design. Now, they've got a developer platform, so if you're a uh, a geek, a coder, if you understand HTML and JavaScript and CSS, you have absolute access to that as well. So really the sky's the limit with your Squarespace blog, but you don't need to. 
is the point to do a great site. Integrate it in with all the, uh, uh, you know, social media, LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter and Flickr and all that stuff. Even Google Maps, you can embed a Google Map right into your blog. Say, this is where we recorded our podcast. Um, and it also imports and exports, very important, from all the major blog APIs, WordPress type packet bloggers, so you're never stuck in a Squarespace site. And if you've got an existing site, it's simple to move it over. Try it right now. See at the, that yellow Get Started button at squarespace.com? Just click that. You don't need a credit card. You, for two weeks, you can use it completely. With, with, without reservation, you even get access to the 24-7 very excellent customer support and service. If after two weeks you say, yes, this is my new home on the interwebs, look at the pricing. Unbelievable. $8 a month for the standard plan. Now, podcasters, you should be looking at $16 a month. Now that's, that, And that's everything. That's when you buy an annual plan. And this is why I like it for podcasters. You see that? Unlimited bandwidth, unlimited storage. So if you get really popular, right. you're not going to get charged extra for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, you know, you could, put, you could put hundreds of podcasts up there. there. There is a limit, I should let you know. The file size can't be bigger than 20 megabytes. That's plenty for audio. For audio. If you're That's doing cool. video, you're going to have to look for another source. We'll tell you about that in a second. Uh, but still, you need the website, and Squarespace would be a great place to do that. Squarespace.com. If you decide to buy, there's only one thing I would ask you. Give us a little uh, love, okay? How do you do that? Very simple. You use our offer code. You'll get... It will give you a little love back because you'll get 10% uh, off your first purchase uh, just for using the offer code KNOWHOW12. KNOWHOW12. That's squarespace.com. And when you sign up, save 10% on your first purchase with new accounts using our offer code KNOWHOW12. All right, I asked. We're making a podcast We've got here. An audio file. What I, what I like to do. You edited it? You cleaned it up? Not even close. I want to show people to do, how to do this because sometimes, let's say you're too far away and the audio, the mic isn't getting picked up right away or your right. audio isn't. I like to use Levelator to level out everything. Now, look at the waveform. Actually, you recorded this beautifully. It's as if you knew what you were doing, like a sound engineer. That's a good waveform. What you want to see is you want to see the peaks hitting the top of the bar, not going over. Yeah, like here, There's a little over, clipping right there. there. You see that? that? When that's flattened out like that, that means it's clipped, and that'll sound buzzy or weird. So you don't want that, but you've done a very good job of recording that, I We also say. have some, we have some, some uh, waveforms that are a little small. They're not as tall as the rest of them. So we have an audio that's not exactly even. So what I'm going to do is... Well, uh, okay, before you do that, yes. let me say, that's normal, because sometimes you talk more quietly. That's so... You don't want everything to sound exactly the same, but sometimes what happens is stuff is recorded at a low level, or somebody starts talking inaudibly and they, you can't hear what they're saying. Well, sometimes you've got a great microphone, you just kind of start looking away, yeah. and your audio level drops. So, so this is a great tool to, autom in an automated way, fix that problem. So for Audacity, first I have to export it as a file for Levelator. So we're going to turn that into an AIF or a WAV file. So we're just going to call this... It's just uncompressed audio. AIFF -F is the Apple format. audio. So yeah. we're going to hit Save. That's going to export to my desktop. Actually, AIFF is not Apple. It stands for Audio Interchange File Format. It's, it's a standard uncompressed, like Wave, uncompressed style. All right, so let's see. Is that zoomed in? So I'm going to drag and drop the file from Super Audio on, onto Levelator. Levelator is a free cross-platform application. It runs on Windows, Mac, and Linux. It's free, and it does all the work for you. So I'm just going to drag this file onto Levelator and then just let it do its job. This is a gift, really, to the community by <clears throat> early podcaster Doug Kay and his Conversations Network. Uh, the Levelator was something that they had written for themselves, and they decided to give away to other podcasters. And it really is a great tool. Now, as you get more professional, there are probably better ways to improve your audio, even better programs than on Audacity. But we're looking at a way to do it inexpensively, easily, without a lot of skills. You don't have to be an auto engineer And this is like a one-on-one -on -one kind of thing. When you're starting off, this is how I, how I like simple. to do it. Yeah. And so when you get an output file, you can see it's actually called Super Audio Output. It's just kind of tiny. It's basically normalizing, as Laura right. Roman is, is pointing out. But it's a little smarter than your average normalization. Normally, when you use, a, look at that. Now, see how see much more consistent that is? This is, yeah. We have, we have, we don't, we, have, we don't have the clipping as much. We don't see that at the front. We've changed things. Things that the levels are a little lower, so it's not super loud because I was yelling into the microphone. Right. So maybe it'll be a little neater. It's, it's smart about what it does. Uh, a normalizer will pick the loudest thing and make everything louder as long as that loudest thing doesn't clip. This does such a much smarter job than that. But I have to point out, if something's clipped, if you've got a waveform and the head is chopped off, there's nothing that can fix it, even right, level that's later. Gone. It's going to be a little bit buzzy, but level later looks like it did a nice job of making that level good. And you do want to do that because what you don't want is people listening in the car and going, eh? 
what was that? And having to turn it up and down. Right. You've got to do that for them. So we're also going to add a little theme song. We're going to put that in the front here. So we're going to put the file set OK. Now the, the theme song is longer than the actual episode. We're going <laughs> to edit. It's a short show. Right. We're going to edit this completely. We're going to cut. So all. first, uh, here's a pro tip. Don't make the theme song longer. I would not recommend that. Episode. Let's just delete no. all this here. And we're going to use the time shift feature, which is this little arrow time shift tool here. Just take a look. When you're playing with Audacity, just you know, take a look at every single icon. They might be different on the different platforms. Hover, wait for that tool tip to show up to tell you what's going on. There's a lot in this program. It's really very close to a professional digital audio workstation, so don't be overwhelmed by We're it. We're going to add a fade out to our little theme song there. You could see the waveform change. Oh, isn't that clever? And then you can slide these waveforms around so that you can... Yep, so they can... Like, each, of those, uh, each of those uh, horizontal bars is what we call a track. So my voice... Uh, is one track. Actually, in this case, recorded stereo audio, but mm -hmm. my voice could be one track, I as it be in another, and then the uh, sound would be in a third, the record, the uh, theme would be in a third. And that's nice. You want to be able to do that so you can uh, modify each. Well, let's, let's hear back how this is going to sound with this whole theme song and the fade out. Good morning, Leo Laporte. There it goes. Very important tip. Listen to your podcast before you publish it. Yeah, you might want to know that you don't have this giant gap between things, because if I move this over here by accident, there'll be a big silence when this is output, and you don't want that. Again, so if you're asking somebody to take their time to listen, you owe it to them to kind of check it before you put it out. So what we're going to want to do is we want to export this as an MP3 file, because that's a small compressed version. When you're uploading things, it makes it a lot easier. I hit export. We're going to select the format, which will be an MP3 file. Now, we should point out that this doesn't come with that feature automatically. You have to download the LAME, believe it or not, that's the name of it, LAME codec, which is an open source MP3 codec. You don't have to pay license fees to use, and that turns it into the MP3 format. It's very easy. Audacity comes with instructions. We have links to, by the way, if you're wondering about where do you find Audacity, where do we find the, the LAME MP3 encoder, where do we find any of this stuff? We'll have links to everything at twit.tv slash kh. We'll have instructions for everything. You'll have links. It'll be great, and you can just do this yourself when you want to. Uh, so back to this MP3. You want an interesting anecdote about Lame? Love the guy who wrote Lame was watching the screensavers while he wrote it. The he whole wrote time? to me later. He said, yeah, I, I just thought you might want to know. I'm a big fan. I, wrote, <laughs> I was writing this while I watched just the right, He wrote it for you. It's fantastic. Well, little did he know. So what we got, we also have a metadata editor. When you're exporting out... Uh, you want to add metadata to your MP3 file. That way, when somebody downloads it, they'll see a title and an artist track and all this stuff that you would normally see with any audio track. We're going to call the artist name, we'll call it uh, Know How. Now, here's a little tip. Uh, and this is something that uh, there's disagreement about. Whenever I put out podcasts, I always make the artist name the same because people are going to sort these on their MP3 player, often by artist name. Uh, the name of the track in this case there's only one, can be the individual episode name. The name of the album would be the show mm -hmm. itself. So, for instance, the album on this show would be Know How. This individual episode would be How to Create a Podcast. That would be the track title. Number's always one. I always put the date in for Full years. Full date? Yeah. You know, in, it's not in the spec, and sometimes it'll be cut off by some programs, but I always put the full date in. If your program displays it, it's very handy for Again, you always want to think about your listener. What will make it easier for them? What will make it more convenient? They may want to sort it by album name so they have all the know-how episodes in one album, but they still may want to sort it by date. So if you can put the full date in and their software can recognize it, it's not part of the spec. The spec is just the year. Genre, I always made podcast. Again, not part of the spec. The official genre is spoken word, but I always put podcast because that in many cases, comes through the uh, podcast listening program. And once you have this file done, you've saved everything, hit did OK. Did you say what, uh, how, uh, how heavily you should compress it? Did you mention Oh, uh, no, I did not mention that, because when I hit OK, it's going to give me options to mess with the MP3. I see. Okay, so So hit see. OK. It's going to tell me it's going to mix it down to stereo. It's supposed to give me options, and it didn't give me options. Okay. So first of all, my recommendation is not stereo unless you're playing music. Uh, over here. If you're Coverville, one of the early podcasts, it was a bunch of cover songs by Brian Ibbotson. Of course you want it to be stereo, but it's just me and I as gassing, even though we could be in the left and right channel. And yes, your, your theme song could be in stereo. Stereo doubles the size of the file. So use mono if it's just spoken word. Yeah, so actually, when you, before you select what version you're going to compress it to, he's going to say, new podcast format, MP3 format. There you plus go. Now options. options. Excuse me, I forgot to hit that. And that's where you can decide, I want the highest quality podcast in the world, or I want the one that sounds like it was recorded on a telephone. And again, think of your audience. My opinion, 64 kilobit mono 
which is the same as 128 kilobits per second stereo. Remember, it's half the size if you only have one track, is, is exactly right. When we put out our audio podcasts, we put out 64 kilobit mono podcast. Now, I didn't see a choice for mono on there. So I didn't see mono on there either. If you want you to do that have kind that of thing. Choice, yeah. uh, you know, if oh, I know why. You have to mix down all those tracks. You have to flatten it because you had two. You had two stereo tracks. It said you can't be mono. You have to do that within Audacity. There's a thing that says make selection mono. You'll need to do that to eliminate the track. So mono, 64 kilobits per second. MP3, that's the format you want to use. Yeah, sometimes I use iTunes as well. There's, other app there's so many different applications to compress your audio if you don't want to go through all the steps of removing the individual tracks. Microstamp asks an interesting question. If you use a, a good intro song, a stereo intro song, should you make your podcast stereo? And I say no, and here's why. The intro is just a few seconds, but in order to make it stereo, you have to double the size of the entire podcast. And so to me, again, considering your audience, I don't think it's that important. But if there's content, stereo content on your podcast, that you do really want to make sure that people hear it in left and right channels, then make it stereo. The good news is nowadays most people don't have to worry about bandwidth, so that's okay. But you notice even now, Steve Gibson still makes a 16 kilobit version of Security Now. 16 kilobit. It is terrible sound. <laughs> it is awful. You can understand it, though. It's spoken word, 16 kilobits, about the minimum for spoken word. And he does it because he considers people in Australia and other places where they have bandwidth caps and they may not want to waste their bandwidth on downloading a full quality audio version. I think you should always make 64 kilobit. But if you know that you're going to be in areas where there are bandwidth caps, uh, you can make smaller file sizes. Just listen to it. You'll see how. Yeah, it's, it's also how much up to you. Like some people, are like why not stereo? Why not stupid? Whatever, whatever you want to do, really. But mono, we like mono. And uh, Geek and Nuck asks about variable bit rate. This is a form of MP3 encoding where you set the maximum. You say, I don't want you to ever use more than 128 kilobits for this encoding. But if you can use less, go ahead. That's what variable bit rate means. And yes, that will save you file size in some cases and still give you good audio quality. So yes, VBR is fine. We don't use VBR. That's more for historical reasons. In the early days, there were some podcast MP3 players that didn't support it. That's right. That's same why reason I don't we do don't it either. Use, yeah, same reason we don't use MP3 Pro, uh, which is an improved format, or things like AAC or AAC Enhanced, which is an Apple format, because it requires, you know, it reduces our universe. In our, you know, in our, for, for us anyway, we want to be, reach the largest possible audience, so we make the most vanilla file we can the one that most players can handle. Yeah, and then also with Audacity, when you're doing all these things, that's why I'm always a big fan of doing the metadata in there because it goes with the file no matter what, and that's going to be readable by everything because most of it's in the spec. So you're not worried about, is it going to play? Is that going to show up? Right. For the most part, it'll show Audacity's up. Audacity's a good choice for mm -hmm. that reason. All right, so we want to host our podcast somewhere. So where are we, what are we going to do? We've got lots of different options. I usually use Posters for my own personal podcast. You can upload up to 100 megabytes for free, really tiny. But if you're afraid of your file disappearing, there's <laughs> always archive.org. You can upload for free, and you, they never remove anything because they want a copy of your file for archiving purposes. So we're going to upload our podcast to Archive. And this is free, which is really nice. Right. So it's, it's a way to do podcasting with no bandwidth cost to you. Another good choice is Libsyn, which is very affordable. They don't charge you for bandwidth. They only charge you for storage space. Uh, there are downsides, though, to using archive.org. If for your listeners, it's slow to download because it's a busy site. So uh, sometimes I found, we used archive.org early on because I didn't have the money for bandwidth. Uh, we, we even used BitTorrent because we wanted to, you know, save money. Um, but in the long run, uh, if you can afford it, give your users good bandwidth because the easier it is for them to download, the more likely they'll continue to listening to your show. Now you do have to sign up for an account with the archive, which is free. I hit, I hit the share button and I uploaded the file. Since it was a tiny file, it's already up there. And you can go ahead and fill in your, your fields of super podcast because that's what this was called. And we're going to call it description. <laughs> the short <laughs> test. You know that people episode. will listen to this. They can if they want to. It'll be up there. <laughs> Keywords will say this is spoken word. And podcast. And somebody's asking, and I uh, incidentally, should you keep the high quality version? And I would say, as long as you can, yes. Certainly for the first week or two, there have been a few times where we went back and fixed problems with a podcast and are glad that we had the original available to work on. Working on a compressed MP3 is going to reduce the quality further. Yeah, I usually end up keeping an archive of my, my all my shows, even the highest, when I do video shows, right. 
I have these giant uh, gigabyte files, and I just hang on to them just in case. The storage is cheap nowadays. Yeah, just in case you have. We actually no longer save the work parts. How long do we save it, Jason? A week? A month? Not very long, because our, our sand gets full, so we actually delete the original videos, the high-quality videos, after a week or two. Oh, yeah, a couple yeah, of weeks. Yeah, a couple of weeks. We, because it's just because, well, this show, for instance, is gigabytes of storage, and then the final cut uh, work, you know, uh, parts and all of that stuff, you, you don't, it's too expensive to save. So it's okay after a while to throw it out. Okay. Remember, Archive saves it forever. <laughs> archive, okay, I don't even know how we got this URL, but I don't know if you can see that. It says archive.org slash detail slash super podcast. Yes! Nobody's ever had we that own before. It. We, we own, own super it. podcast. Very helpful. Leo's doing a victory lap. And what... Uh, you know what? We better start a show called Super Podcast Well, we got now. it now. Uh, archive.org also does you a favor. It does transcode your audio to Og Vorbis. If you want to <laughs> put that out there, it's a, that's an open standard. People don't really use it that much. You know, the think. only thing we use Og Vorbis for, and I think we even stopped it for that because it was very few people downloaded it, was for our open source podcast. Because people do complain, on Linux especially, because MP3 is not open, it is a licensed podcast. Uh, they don't want to, people like Richard Stallman don't want to use commercial software. And in that case, Og Vorbis is the only choice. So if you interview Richard Stallman or you put out an open source podcast, it probably would behoove you to put out Og Vorbis, but you're going to still have to put out MP3 because there are very few MP3 players that can handle Og Vorbis. So what we're going to do is now we're going to take our podcast. Now we can. I'm going to embed this on a blog. So I'm going to click the embed this. I've got some code here. You're going to just cut that. And I'm going to go to Blogger because that's available. I have a Google it's account. It's free. It's easy. It's what free. the hell? Why not? We're going to call this, let's see, we're going to call this episode for a new hope. I don't think anybody's ever called anything that before. I'm going to put in the HTML. Do yourself a favor. Maybe you do HTML. <laughs> now, notice this is an iframe. So what it's going to have is, a, is an actual window on your podcast linking back to archive.org. That's fine in most cases. That's fine when it comes to your player. When you're right. doing your podcast, you're going to want to have download links and things here. Be like download. And then we're going to go get the actual link to the file. We'll right-click this, copy link address. And if you guys, you guys probably know HTML better than I do, hey, href. As I type old school MP3. Look at that. Aren't you aren't you slick? I used to do this all the time I because know. I don't I, this idea of WYSIWYG was not a thing when I was growing up. I'm gonna hit publish because I think it's gonna be awesome. Let's see what this looks like. <laughs> and we're gonna take a look at this we live. Have a, we have a blog. We have a blog loading up. Let's see what happens. Look at there's the player. There's the player. That's something nice that archive.org does automatically, and that is a really nice feature. And you can see with the iframe, there seems to be some weirdness when it comes to the formatting. You see that big white space? And there's download down well, there. Well, it's big. That doesn't really matter because no. that's we'll, we'll no. get, we can clean that up. That's blog editing, and that's not what we're doing today. Maybe I don't know. That's just a weird iframe. I think, I think the iframe's just really yeah. large right yeah. there. Or now, I'm zoomed in, so it's you strange. You see why though? If you can afford it, Squarespace is a great choice. You could store the file there. Mm -hmm. You could do all of that stuff within a Squarespace thing. It's going to look a little bit better. But we're showing you this is how you could do it for absolutely no cost. We didn't pay anything. So far, we used the laptop you had, the microphone you had, free audio editing software, free levelator, free website, even free storage at archive.org. You can't get much cheaper than this. I don't, I don't think so. I think the most expensive thing is uh, the, the hosts. Anyway, so... The hosts cost a lot. What we want to do after this, though, we need, an, we need to get a, this thing into an RSS, right? But the thing, thing is about Blogger, it forms an RSS feed for you. But Well, I was going to ask you about that. Because that's the hardest part of a podcast is making the podcast RSS feed. Does this do that for you? Blogger does it. Pretty much every service out there, WordPress.org, uh, everything does make this. make a properly formed iTunes compatible RSS feed. That's fantastic. For the most part. What we're going to do, we're going to make this. This has changed a lot because nobody did this. We're going to make it a little easier for ourselves because. I use FeedBurner, which is no longer around, or is it? FeedBurner is still around, and it's owned by Google. Things are changing about we the tools. We keep waiting for FeedBurner to go away. That's right. It's still around. That's kind of cool. Show them FeedBurner. This is also a free service. Sure, I'll go to FeedBurner. And now I've got tons of podcasts of my own here, so we're going to see my own podcasts, so my old Channel Flip web show. Now, how FeedBurner works is something really, really great, because what you're going to do once you have your RSS feed and everything, you're going to submit it to a directory, right? But if you ever change what happens to your podcast or how you host it, you have to alert everybody. Oh. Now, FeedBurner is an intermediary. What you're going to do is you're going to say, I want a new feed. So we're going to go down here, burn a feed right this instant. I need to grab the RSS feed. It was created 
to do pretty much exactly this. Take a blog or a website or a podcast and turn it into an RSS feed. And it understands all the different ins and outs. The iTunes format slightly different than the standard RSS format. And it does it all correctly. So FeedBurner is a great service. I'll be very sad if Google discontinues it, although there's some thought that it probably will. Tumblr is another uh, website. Keeksta uses Tumblr for his podcast that has built-in uh, capabilities like the MP3 player and the, the ability worst, to make RSS I've had the feeds. worst time with Google Chrome when it comes to getting an RSS feed out Isn't of it. Isn't that ironic? Because I know, it makes no sense. Um, let's see if I can just copy this. It's all by Google. I know, it's all Google and it's all messing with me right now. Let me just grab that thing. So do, can't you just put the URL of the blog in there? You don't have to actually put the feed in there, do you? Let's try it. Why not? I bet you it'd auto-discover the I bet you're RSS right because feed. It's all Google. Type your blog. We're going to say, I'm a podcaster. That's an option because FeedBurner is built for podcasters. Oh, isn't that nice? Hit next. Rick Clow, the guy who created Thank FeedBurner, uh, did a great job, sold it to Google. And I, he is now still at Google, but I do pray that they keep FeedBurner. So there's a spectacular show. We're going to hit next. And by the way, don't worry about Adam versus RSS. They're just different specifications that do exactly the same thing. So we're going to Adam's a little more modern, but uh, so you're going to go through all matter. of the feed burner steps. Really simple. There's all kinds of ways that you can customize your podcast. We're going to go right to feed management. So you can do things like set up your album art. You can make it iTunes friendly. So if for some reason the blog you're using doesn't have everything set up for you, you can always use this. I'm a big fan of it. I've been using this since well before Google bought it. Yeah, and it's still really Me powerful. Too. Me too. I love FeedBurner. And you get the stats and all of that. The only thing to remember is FeedBurner now, the URL that you're giving everybody goes to FeedBurner. That's a plus because, as you said, you can change your website and it doesn't matter. But it also means you don't control that URL. And I, that's why ultimately we stopped using FeedBurner. I wanted to make sure that I controlled the domains that I was sending people to for our podcast. I guess you could set up your own redirect system that way. Yeah. That way you could have the intermediary. That's a good idea, yeah. But that, that's, a, that's another show entirely as well, I guess. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to submit this to iTunes because you've got to get your podcast found by somebody, right? You've got to set it to a directory. We're we gonna... still, with all the promotion we do, with how well-known we are and everything, uh, Twit gets 90% of its downloads through iTunes. It is still the big gorilla in so this business. We're in iTunes. We're going to submit a podcast. There's just uh, a link there that says submit podcast. It used to be much larger. So we're going to go ahead and put our <laughs> feed burner feed, no, which is... Your eyes were better. You were younger. I was younger a long time ago. <laughs> HTTP feeds.feedburner.com slash, what did I call it? Crash test IAS. Because that's what they called it. They continue. Now, we just set it up, so we'll see. You Next. have to log in. Sh sh take your, uh, take the, uh, yeah, there you go. Now Thank you. you. Yeah. So uh, this takes a day, as long as a day. Uh, iTunes has to vet it. They look at it, and Apple will then add it to their list. But it does make a huge difference. Make sure you categorize it properly. You can go into FeedBurner settings and do that, because it'll show up in that category. Ah, there you so go. So right now, I obviously, I didn't set up the feed completely. You can see the artwork isn't there yet. That's Apple's generic artwork. The name is Crash Test. I can change all of these things in FeedBurner. You really do want artwork, by the way. Make sure you get some artwork. And remember, the artwork has to look good at small sizes as well as big sizes. So you can, you can change your categories, all kinds of things. But I suggest doing all of that in FeedBurner under SmartCast first, then submitting it. Yeah. I'm just showing you how to do it. Let's submit this terrible idea right now. I didn't complete the form. What's the category? I'm going to call this arts. <laughs> Subcategory. It's all about fashion and beauty, Leo. That's it. That's what That's we're doing. Us. We gotta come completely. back next week and do another super podcast it's on fashion and beauty. Well, that's what we do. You know, I think that'd be a great show. I as in Leo's fashion and beauty tips. I love it. We're very credible. We're gorgeous, good-looking. This men. is true. So you listen to the audio only. You should download well the episode dressed. in HD. Yeah, it's let's available. do that. <laughs> that's the next show. Yeah. Know how to be. I can give them fashion tips. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, you've... makeup tips. Hmm, I could use yeah. makeup. Hair I tips. I think we should do that. Super podcast. Super podcast coming I soon. Leo's super podcast. But we don't have to worry about bandwidth. We don't have to worry about anything because our stuff's on archive.org or we've used an appropriate. In case it becomes huge. It will be. It'll be gigantic. Mm. But anyway, that's pretty much everything. So you've set up a podcast. It's really simple. All you got to do is keep doing episodes week in, week out. I cannot underestimate the importance of that. A lot of times people start a podcast and they do it whenever they feel like it. If you want to be a success, you got to do one a week on schedule, rock solid, 
even though nobody listens to it. Just keep doing it every week. The longer you do it, the more successful you'll be. In fact, there are some crappy podcasts out there that are only successful because they don't stop. They just keep on going. And you know another thing? You get better the more you do it. Not only will you get better when you're as a presenter and all these things, you're going to be able to tweak things as you go along. You know, you can go ahead and get a different microphone. You can get a different yeah. piece of uh, editing hardware, software. Folks, this show, this network started this way. You someday, too, could have a million and a half dollar studio and a debt that will crush you like a burden. Uh, well, maybe, or, or you don't need to have a crushing debt because maybe your, po your podcast won't be as successful or not. But either way, just learn how to do it. You know how to do it right That's now. That's a curse, by the way. May <laughs> your podcast be successful. Wow. That, that, now you've put off the people from doing this at all. So I suggest doing podcasting. I really enjoy it. I love it. Then again, I don't have to, I don't have to no, pay for this. I was joking. <laughs> it is the most rewarding profession. My last bit, I said we wouldn't do content, but my last bit of advice is, when you do a podcast, make sure it's something you love. You cannot stop it. You can't wait till that day when you sit down at the microphone and do your show. You have to have a passion for it because there's going to be hard times. You're going to say, hey, nobody's listening. You're going to say, I've got a crushing debt. Whatever it is, you got to have a passion for what you're doing. That will keep you through the bad times and get you to the good times. And frankly, that's what people want. Uh, who are you going to listen to? Somebody who desperately, passionately loves what they're talking about or somebody who's trying to make some money off of you? You're going to do it because they love it. So podcast your passion. That, I mean, that's what I got to do. I mean, I, I was a now fan. Now he's stuck doing this. Now I love do. I still love this job. Yeah. I do it for free, but thankfully they don't make me do that. Anyway, <laughs> let's. Uh, by the way, if, if if you watch today's episode again, you don't know where the links are. You don't know where anything is. Go to twittv kh show notes with instructions. There'll be links available to everything we talked about. You can watch older episodes at twit.tv slash kh. You can learn how to do lots of things like make a Hackintosh. And maybe with your Hackintosh, you could go ahead and make a podcast. You can. If you wanted to. Or grow a strange mustache. Those guys should not be giving fashion and beauty <laughs> advice at all. Those guys are just awful. That's who uh, should be doing the super podcast, Frobish Madagascar. Yes, and, and Leo the Sp Leon Leon Spork. Spork. That guy is excellent. That's who should be doing it. And you can also send us, if you got show ideas or you got projects or questions, let us know. Know how at twit.tv or leave us a voicemail at 408 800 KNOW. And listen to as many podcasts as you can. There are so many great ones, literally hundreds of thousands of podcasts. Some of the best material, the funniest stories, the most informative stuff, not just ours, but it is an amazing community, and you're going to absolutely love it. If you'd like to know more about podcasting, I'd also like to invite you to the New Media Expo and Blog World, which we're going to be at. It's in Las Vegas. It's coming up in the first week in January. If you want to go, we've got passes, discount passes, on our site at twit.tv or leo, um, uh, sorry, techguylabs.com uh, and get those discounted passes. And I'm going to be keynoting there. We're also going to be doing the podcast awards. It's an amazing community that I love dearly. It's been a, such a great adventure for us. So go out and do it. Join the community. Participate. Get to know your other podcasters. Listen to podcasts and, and have fun. Now that you know how, go join the community of podcasters. Go make your own podcast. We'll see you later. That was a good show. Actually, I was a little skeptical, but that was really fun. Good choice. <laughs> Can we keep that in? That was very skeptical. I, wanna... <laughs> I thought, really? We're going to do a show about podcasting? <laughs>